Today, some of Pro Bowling's top names are on the lanes to compete with their teams in the PBA Elite League, like Jason Belmonte and the LAX against Chris Barnes and the New Jersey Kingpins. And then, reigning player of the year, E.J. Tackett, the Motown Muscle, will take on Jesper Svensson and the Akron Adam Splitters. The PBA Elite League is next on FS1. Snickers round number 12 with a doubleheader today. The Kingpins and LAX to start things off. The Adam Splitter versus the Muscle in our second match today here at the incredible Strobel Arena at Thunder Bowl Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan. Hello again, everybody, with Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. I'm Dave Lamont. You know, Randy, we were privileged yesterday, as always, to see some of the best in the world go at it in the team competition. But the real co-star yesterday wasn't the players. It was the lanes. Are you referring to the Earl Anthony 43-foot oil pattern? I am. It created total carnage for some of the best players in the world yesterday. And think about this. Out of the eight games bowled, only two of them were over 200. But both matches did go to a roll-off. Our Bowl TV highlight showing you the first First roll off, but here's what you were talking about here on that right hand lane. Watch this five through the middle for DJ Archer. And it was just non stop throughout the entire telecast. Came down to Frank Snodgrass, local. All he had to do is basically just pipe it down the middle, and Dallas ends up staying alive in the playoff chase by beating Waco. Now, Las Vegas and Portland, a top of the table matchup. It was a good day for Matt Russo, but really again, was. here's the lanes. There you go. Another six count. Goes light on the left lane, does Chris Prather. And now it's up to Andrew Anderson, and he throws this beautiful strike to lock it up for the Las Vegas High Rollers. Yeah, it was a good day for the locals yesterday with Snodgrass and Anderson coming up with big strikes in the team competition. So now we look at an LAX team that has a chance to knock Dallas out. Well, all that talk we had yesterday, well, the strikers of the Waco Wonders going to win. They're, they still have a chance. But Jason Belmonte and his team can take care of that today. Yeah, with a win, they actually knocked Dallas out. And Jason Belmonte has not had a lot of success in the PBA Elite League, but he has a chance to get into the top six and lock his spot and his team spot and punch their ticket to Portland, Maine. And he is standing by right now with Kimberly. Jason, with a win here today, your team will secure their spots into the playoffs. But like they talked about in the open, that this pair has been absolutely brutal. So what's the strategy today to get some strikes? Because yesterday they were really hard to come by. Yeah, I think we, we talked as a team and it was going to be more about um, we're, we're going to try to keep things a little more simple today, not try to cover so many boards. Um, every day is different, so we don't know what's going to happen today on this pair. but. Uh, we feel really confident if we just execute a simple game plan, make our spares, um, you know, we'll, we'll give these guys a good run. It's a good plan. Let's see if it happens. Good luck to you guys. Uh, thank you, Jason and Kimberly, very much. Let's take a look at our lineups. First off, uh, the Ballard family. Carolyn Doran Ballard and Del Ballard managing today for New Jersey Kingpins. They go with experience at the top. Chris Barnes, the rookie, Cortez Schenk, last year's rookie of the year, I should say. The very talented B.J. Moore, the powerful Marshall Kent in the number four position and the anchor is going to be a strong one as well for this team in Packy Hanrahan. <laughs> Here's somebody who we know watched yesterday's telecast and knows all about those lane conditions. I have a feeling that uh, in this first match it's going to be real urethane heavy, meaning all the players or the majority of the players will be throwing urethane equipment and right there Barnes starts off with urethane. On the left lane, the right lane for the most part was the trickier of the two, but it wasn't like the left lane was a visit to a theme park. <laughs> well, all team wins came on the left lane. Right. And then one of the roll-offs was one on the left, the other on the right. LA starting with McHugh, oh my goodness. Um, that was the heater, Ricky. I move four. There are school zones that he would get a ticket for with four, that shot. Yeah. Almost 22 miles an hour. I don't want to drive in a car with him and go over speed bumps. <laughs> the feeling he just doesn't care. 
goodness. Cortez the killer right here. Ooh, that's I thought that might cross over. Right, come, on. come on, right now. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. Run it over. Come on. Four card now. Same leave as Chris Barnes, except now you add the nine pin, which makes this uh, a, a bit more difficult. So 65% of the time on this 369-10. Beautifully done. <laughs> So the LA lineup here, Darren Tang hitting in the second position. He'll be followed by Kevin Williams, the Dominator, and then Jason Belmonte. Understandably at the anchor position, Tomas Kaiku. And you moved that couple right, or you just did one? one. Yeah, that was a good speed too. And here's BJ Moore. Just a sweet game right here. Well, they're consistent. Wow. Three, six, ten, three, six, nine, ten, three, six, ten. All urethane. Every player thus far. Have all used urethane. Perfectly done there by BJ Moore in that uh, wow, 80 percent. That's really helpful. Andy. Yeah, 80 percent of the time it's made, and all those great stats come to us from our dear friends at Lane Talk. For more information, head on over to LaneTalk.com and download the free app. Something got in Kevin Williams' way, and while he gets either a re-rack or just gets himself adjusted, and we'll remind, oh, there's the problem. Dead we got wood. some dead wood right there. Now, this is a race to two, very simple. So let's just say this match holds, and L.A. wins the first match. If they win the second one, we're finished, and we'll move on. If, however, we are tied after two, we will have a three-frame aggregate roll-off. No spares, just one ball, and if that isn't enough, then penalty kicks. Are you kidding me? That is weird. They may have to respot yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that oh, no, might get knocked down, down by the pin setter because it's off spot. But it was the five pin that got nudged over. Yeah, the five, the five fingers are in the air, or the four fingers and the thumb, depending on how you feel about that. Yep, yeah, that is going to be. Uh, it moved a couple of things around. Yep. Nope, Oh, Ryan Simonelli getting in on the fun. The MVP last year. But uh, it's been a difficult year for Ryan. He was actually taken off the Waco team by his friend Parker Bowman III. Kevin avoids the big embarrassment. <laughs> but hopefully Ryan will get his game together. Had a long chat with him uh, before the show today. So I'm pulling for him to do well. Kent with a title this year. Okay, we broke up wow. that 3 6 10 racket. Every uh, one of their shots is hooked early and gone high. And the only good news is that they haven't split yet. Marshall liked that shot until it got about halfway down the lane. It was the right lane that was the fuss budget yeah, yeah. yesterday. Now, Packy Hanrahan will be approaching this from a different side when he gets up, so we'll see what it looks like for the lefty. For the Kingpins. Meantime, Dom Barrett, skilled shot maker to say the least. Ten-time champion. Future Hall of Famer. No doubt about it. Seven. Just a beautiful game, that swing and his touch, plenty of power.
And the crowd puffed up for Packy. Well, there you go, just switch sides, that's all. First strike for the Kingpins in this match. I mean, the deficit's only 18, but it could it could have been a lot worse considering the first four shots that went through the nose for the Kingpins. And if Kevin Williams carries that five pin in the third, this could have got out of hand real quick. Somebody who knows how to take a match and get out of hand with it quickly is this man. Wow. Just ever so tiny bit off. 10 players, 10 urethane bowling balls. Every player is using urethane, and obviously they watched very closely to the action yesterday. And the game plan's simple. Use your urethane, it doesn't hook as much, you don't have to shape it as much, you can keep it online. Easy conversion for Jason. Oh, I can't believe that over the hook. So right now, once again, it's the lanes that are having a lot to say about this match, but it's the left lane that's being the trouble horse right now, except for that guy, Packy Hanran, who put 10 in the pit where they belong. the Randy Peterson big head. I thought Mike J carried that around with him yeah. in his suitcase. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that. No, I think we do. Take a look at this 43-foot Earl Anthony oil pattern. Yeah, let's take a look at it, shall we? <laughs> I mean, what a head scratcher, and it's it's just, uh, I, I think it's just so apropos that this pattern is so tough, named after the late great Earl Anthony, but you can see where the players are gonna try to play, but what we're seeing early on right now Especially on that right lane as the players playing ex the extreme outside part of the lane. I think if Earl was here, he would have loved this. He would have loved watching this. Let's go, let's go down the to the lanes and talk to one of the managers of the Kingpins, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. What kind of adjustments is your team going to make after all of your right-handers went through the face their first shots? Well, as you can see, I'm cracking up. Hey, kids, spares are important, as you can see with our first five frames. Uh, this pair was tricky for the last TV show. Um, we thought we made the adjustment. Obviously, we're trying to play to the right, take the lane play, uh, lane out of play. We're going to make a move off of the first uh, four guys. As you can see, everybody feels pretty confident. But basically, just making the move, clean frames, and hopefully it comes down the 10th. All right, Carolyn, thank you. That's how she bowled. Stay clean, right. make your spares, comes down to the 10th, and yeah, that's why she is a Hall of Famer. She also used another tactic as well, intimidation. Oh no, I know, I know. She, she yeah. was, yeah, she yeah, was yeah, scary. Yeah. yeah. Well, a completely different throw that time for Chris Barnes than the first time around. He just went harder and faster. It's way better than 3 6 <laughs> Well, when you're good, you can do things like that. How about when you're 54 years old and you can throw it almost 20 miles an hour? Yep. My ears hurt. My head hurts. <laughs> I think he threw that one faster than the first one. Kevin McKeon. I think two tenths of a mile faster. Yeah. Come on, Cortez, you got this. Let's go. Let's go, Rook. <laughs> the, the reigning rookie of the year. Come on, Rook. That was, that was Chris. <laughs> Can take the lead right here. Well, they have adjusted. Hello. I mean, the zone kind of looks the same, but like that shot there looked like Cortez took his hand out of it a little bit. I think he threw a little faster also. Cars threw it faster. Well, the ball didn't hook early, so it's going to go faster, right? Well, you do have a few bowling brains in there because also part of that group is Del Ballard. It's Hall uh, of Famer. It's bowling's Mensa group. Oh, late and down goes Frazier. Tang high and tight. Oh, love kick. 
on the 10. Just enough to get it to go. And the lead back to LAX. Uh, he's farther left. Oh, no, and he was smacking the pocket, too. God damn it, that was good. That was real good, BJ. 526 on the Reverie calendar. Oh, he's got plenty. Whew. And he's got more in the tank. Yeah, he does. Pick it up. Pick it up. So solid. Yeah. Let's go. Such a good move. What a great game. Love watching him bowl. Him. There's a couple of games I really enjoy watching out here. One, one is BJ Moore. The other, Chris Prey. There, I just love oh, yeah. watching their action. Yep. Nope. Not even. Not enough of a kiss on the seven. I think I put it on the other side of the rack. Oh, no, you got it. Well, good news for Kevin Williams. He hit the pocket twice, left that stupid shaker nudged five pin, and now it's just the soft seven. We still have a match. Eight, if he spares here. Scoring faced a little better than anticipated. Yeah, because the players broke the pair down better. They went, they went with a... a a much simpler game plan, and that's the urethane balls keeping everything online and in play, and it also forced them to stay in the same part of the lane during warm-ups to break the lane down completely different than the players did yesterday. And another strike for the Kingpins. Remember, the at stake here for LAX is a playoff berth. If they win today, they clinch the sixth and final playoff spot for the PBA Elite League. There's another guy that's got plenty of rev rate that uses his thumb. And now Donald, and he found a sweet pocket hit, but unfortunately a ringing 10 for Barrett. We can live with those, that's a good shot. You see the max scores now switching in favor of the Kingpins for that first point. It's a pretty shot. Yep. tight this game is, LAX has not missed the pocket. No, and actually, think about it. New Jersey did the first five the first, shots. The first, first four, four sure. on the right side. LAX hasn't missed. Yeah. And they're only up by eight. And in jeopardy of losing. Yeah, the max scores are in favor of New Jersey. Mackie looking to double. Not a problem. So we've been uh, looking at some numbers ball speed wise, right? Yeah. Saw so 20, almost a 22, right? 17.3 for Pack. You're good. That's all right. Come on, one more time, just like that. And that's why he's got more shape, right? Urethane ball, slower speed, it's going to shape a little bit more. And in that anchor position, he can shut him out. Wow. What, I mean, what a turnaround, right? This game isn't always fair, but let's see what happens to Packy first. We're not burying LA just yet. Hey, he's got to move. Well, you can see just how far to the left he got that one. What's that math? Where's it to? Well, somebody doing a quick little bit of math in his head right now. The man from Australia. So if he only gets two, it'll be 216, right? Belmonte would need strike spare to win by one. At two, at two. Right here, I think the play is to just get to. Right, put, put it in Belmonte's hands and hope. That's exactly what he's doing. Well, it's a smart play. Tessiova's always smarter. And you can hear Carolyn yelling, get two, get two. Now, Belmo, if he gets nine on this on this shot, he'll need a spare strike to tie. So 
we may have a roll off before we would have a roll off or right. a shootout in this case. Very possible. Yep. Let's see. First things first, strike here. Of Belmonte Messenger. That was a coast to coast messenger, baby. Wow. That is that signature Belmo Messenger that we have gotten so used to. This is a just right strike brought to you by Just Bear, the mindful choice for high quality protein with no antibiotics ever. Just right, Just Bear. Mark will do it. Reminiscent of the Masters last week. Bingo, the 810. Look at this. And the, it's there. The two 810 yes. was there for a moment, and the two and the 10 went simultaneously. All right, make it, you win. Simple. You get a point in the race to two. I like his chances. It, and in all honesty, it shouldn't have been this close, right? I mean, that was the only ball that missed the pocket for this game. Yeah. That's one of the better 217 games uh, yeah. you'll ever see in your life as far yeah. as accuracy goes. So LAX is a point closer to nailing down the last playoff spot and eliminating the Dallas Strikers. They're going to switch lanes and we'll see if they can shut them out and take down the Strikers too. Let's not forget 2013, the inaugural Elias Cup at the great Royal Pin Woodland just outside Indianapolis. The New York City WTT Kingpins beat the Motown Muscle in a two-game total pinfall Baker team match. You had, look at this team, by the way. There's Scott Norton, Tommy Jones, John Zerpinski. Norton, Norton. Look, it's PDW. Oh, as you'd say, feathering it down. Oh, God, just I love that. Again. I love that so much. Yak Jurek and Kelly Kulik. And Billy Jean King right there, the founder of the New York City Kingpins, now based in New Jersey, home state of so many bold, Kelly Kulig being one of them, Carol and Doran Ballard another, and others, John, a fellow named John Petraglia. You were standing by with a fellow named Jason Belmonte. Yeah, let's go down to the floor and talk to Jason. Jason, congrats on game one win. Just wanted to know if your heart skipped a beat or two that second ball in the 10th. Yeah, interestingly, the second shot was actually a little better off my hand, and it just kind of... Um, caught that hang spot down there. That lane has been tricky all week. So, yeah, when I saw the 10 pin finally fall, um, definitely was a little bit more relieved. The last time I saw the 8 10 stand in, it cost me a, a chance at a major championship title. So, I'm glad, I'm glad that sucker fell this time. Nice. And, and then uh, finally, what type of adjustments does your team make going from the right lane to the left lane? It's another really good question, Randy. Again, I think the left lane has some defined hook in the front. Um, you know, you looked at their team, their first four shots all went high. Um, I think we're, we're going to have to play pretty clever here. We're going to move out of that spot, try and see a little less friction in the front, keep our game plan simple like we did the first game, and, and hopefully we can just get a couple of uh, doubles here or there. And, we put up a pretty decent number, and it's going to be tough to beat on that lane. All right, Jason, thanks, and good luck. You know, any time Jason Belmonte says, that's a really good question, Randy, mm -hmm. I get, like, really warm and fuzzy inside. An angel gets its wings. Right? Yeah, I mean, oh, my gosh. That's exactly what happens. Thank you for that compliment, Jason. All right, hide the women and children. <laughs> it's Kevin McCune. Oh, man. Well, you can see what Kevin Williams, or excuse me, you're still shook up. It's okay. It's going to be okay, big fella. Uh, oh, my goodness. Oh, Only 21.5 that time. That was the problem for McCune. Yeah, you can see what Kevin McCune's going to do right here, right out of the gate. He's just going to throw it really, really, really hard and straight. The other players are going to shape it. Kevin Williams, he's a left-hander, by the way. Yes, sir. And Richie okay, Tease has jumped into the number two position. Number, well, wait a minute now. No, he's leading off. He's leading off. Uh, so Shank has been moved out. I don't think Barnes is out, but we do know that 
Uh oh. Uh -oh. And one more? Harry. No. So Richie Tees went way wide right there. Nice. Well, I got a future Hall of Famer standing behind our booth. Yeah, Sean, Sean Rash. Rash. Yeah. And after that shot, I just turned around and looked at Sean, and Sean just covered his eyes. And again, the, the, we talked about it during the break, Sean and I. Was, it, it's all about not trying to shape it on this tough oil pattern. Well, we know that Shank is out, so we'll see if Barnes moves into the number two position. We'll find out here fast enough. Richie Tease will take care of business there. By the way, hardly to find a nicer guy in his building than Richie Teese. He's yeah, he's. If you don't, if you have a problem with Richie Teese, I don't think I like you, <laughs> whoever you may be. He's pretty kind. He is a good dude. Uh -oh. Wow, that's out there. What a beautiful that's job by Tay in there at the same time. Wow, three to one. Look at the numbers. Thank you very much. And Darren Tang working very hard on his game with coach Mark Baker, arguably the best coach in the United States. Oh, yeah. Working Somebody on else his timing. Who's worked hard with Mark Baker? Here's another guy that works with <laughs> coach Mark Baker. Look out. Oh, I thought he had that. Pretty good shot, though. Yeah. Those two occasionally will team up and do uh, Baker yeah, Barnes clinics. Imagine you might get a little knowledge out of those two. I've never been invited to one of those. You don't need a clinic. You're Randy Peterson. <laughs> you can do your own. <laughs> uh, <I laughs> We're going to leave the rest of that clinic stuff alone and move on. All right, nice pair's good. It's fine. By the way, something else, we've been talking so much about L.A. trying to get into the playoffs that New Jersey is still in contention for a first round bye. That is correct. Although they have the second lowest average in the league. Yeah. But they were the second team to clinch a playoff spot and they are still in contention for a first round bye. Las Vegas took a big jump yesterday with that win for the bye. Kevin through the nose and he's got some extra work to do. Kevin Williams, not to be confused with Kevin McCune has some work to do on the baby split to 2-7. And the idea on this is just to cover both pins with the ball, but we watched Packy on that lane and he was actually creating more shape. That was a probably too straight up the lane and not enough angle. Okay. You can see Jason Belmonte in the background. He's just, his gears are just spinning right now. He's just processing everything. Uh oh. So an open frame against LAX. They're first today. Second, pardon me. And BJ Moore, who nearly made the big show in the PBA Players Championship. throw it that good you don't have to go to clinics wow but it's hard to replicate that kind of talent give me that and watch the torque and the elbow and the wrist on the way down oh he makes it look like that ball weighs 10 pounds man I see that torque and I need an MRI now on my right arm Good one. That's what Kevin McKean was trying to do. He went just a hair high on 4 9, unfortunately. Because my ring 10 on the tight lane, I didn't do anything different. But I'm a bit thumbed down at the moment. Well, interestingly, after the talk of the lanes being very pesky yesterday, and they were, uh, it seems that some local knowledge was gleaned by everybody here, and we're getting some good scores. Pitch. Not bad. No, no, it's the same shot, pretty much the same result as Chris Barnes had. A solid yeah. four pin. Hit the pocket. If you don't strike, nine spare works. Especially when you have a 22 pin lead. Halfway through, almost halfway through game two. Close. Here you see Dell Ballard offering some advice and Jason Belmonte. 
captured the first point. In the Big Tenth frame, third in the USBC Masters. Watch that video over again, too, of him not stepping away when something bothered him and, and getting stuck with an A-10 is painful to watch. Yeah. That's not painful. That's pretty sweet. Winningest player in major championship history. Peeling that urethane ball off of the 2-3 board. 2 time champions Packy joined the Kingpins last season. There you go. Much better. Late reaction on the 10, but down it goes. Five through, and if this form holds, we're going to have a shootout. Kingpins trying to overcome a one point to nothing deficit. Some solid bowling, though, so far today here at this historic home in Allen Park, Michigan. Thunder Bowl. And registration for the 2024 PBA LBC National Championships is open now to bowlers of all skill levels and from all centers. The PBA LBC National Championships is heading to a new location outside Chicago and includes two new junior divisions. You can compete in singles and optional doubles and team events, too. Even combine your scores with the pros. Enter today at PBA.com slash LBC Tournament. With Kimberly Preston and Randy Peterson, I'm Dave Lamont. Game number two between LAX and Kingpins here in PBA Elite League presented by Snickers. Second half of game two, if LAX takes this point, that's the end of this match. Hune right through the face at 22.6. It's hardest shot so far. He went up a full 1.1 miles an hour from his first shot in his other frame. He's just going to hammer a couple off the back wall here. Yeah, almost. So another open frame for LAX, and it increases the Kingpin's lead and their opportunity to force a shootout. Yeah, Kevin McCune just overthrew it. Yeah, that's the second time that Richie has done that exact same shot. Actually, that he actually moved right on that shot. Even further? He moved right and closed his angles down just a little bit. Right. I'm going to get a number for you and tell you how many different. It was a good three to four boards different. But it's too much angled that way. It's too much angled to the right. And just can't come back. In jeopardy of an open frame if he doesn't convert the washout. And he doesn't. So. The gift that was given to them was re-gifted. Yeah, I, I think they had scratchers that he's not using urethane like everybody else. Yeah, that's right. He said he's got reactive. This has been a urethane party. Darren Tang, by the way, is looking very, very good today for LAX. He's been living on the edge, but he's been striking. Until now. Yeah, that was left. And he pays for it. Well, a bit. All right, get the ball over here to the right of the three pin. Cut it into the four and seven. Lane Talk tells us about one and five conversion. Overcut it. Well, we've had three straight open frames, two by LAX, one by the Kingpins. We'll see if Chris Barnes can step in and take advantage. Earl Anthony looking down upon us, saying, as it should be. Now, he knew how to handle every pattern, but he was particularly tougher when the courses were tougher, the patterns were tougher. Yeah. Like a great golfer on a, on a tough golf course. Overwhelm it like Barnes is just straight at it. Boom. Yeah. 
There was no messing around with that shot. That's about as direct as you can do it. Just nearly 20 miles an hour, and his philosophy just seems to be, I'm going to pipe it where I want to pipe it. Well, it looks like it's easier to trap it on the right lane. The left lane hooks a little bit more. The players have to be in a little bit deeper on that lane. That was a no-nonsense shot from him. They could use one from Kevin Williams. Didn't get it. He's been around the pocket. Never know. And this is looking more and more like another extra inning type of match. Well, we talked about this yesterday. We'll bring it up now. When do you, as the manager, start thinking about your shootout? This is far from over. This match can turn on a dime, but still. I think the thing that the managers are thinking about is what players they're going to use. Right, right. That's the first thing. Yeah, for sure. And the shootout format very quickly is three frames, cumulative score, no second ball. So let's say B.J. Moore is chosen. He's going to get one ball. And here they are right now. The team with a higher three-shot total will win. And if we're still tied, then we'll go to, I joked about penalty kicks earlier, but obviously we will go to uh, just a one-ball roll-off, essentially, until we have a winner. Boy, that's just, it put that Get in a there. museum. Oh, yeah. Good way I've shown you the way. I'm just trying to learn. I'm just trying to learn. Again, another shot that gets trapped on this right lane. BJ going straighter with more speed. And Chris Barnes says, I've showed you the way. <laughs> Grasshopper. Yeah, Chris didn't have that rev rate. Bless his heart. And Don Barrett has just been as professional as you could ask a guy to be. Quietly doing his job. That's the way Don Barrett does things. <laughs> Sets him up in the foundation, but Marshall Kent to wound LAX right here. Well, yesterday, the left lane was the better of the two lanes, but not today. Nope, nope. <laughs> Kingpins have proven that. Hey, that was a rack ripper from Marshall. I'm going to assume that if we get to the shootout, which seems highly likely, he'll be in there. Yep, Dom will be in there. He'll be in there. Uh, wow, Tang or McCune? I, I don't know if we can. Kevin Williams has the look right now. Kevin Williams look doesn't look great on that left lane. And they, by the way, they do not switch lanes here. All right, and New Jersey will get the first pick of who gets to go first. I'm betting we both know Carolyn reasonably well. She's going to want to go first, don't you think? Put the heat on. I think so. We could ask her, you know. <laughs> so that was, it's almost throwing the ball beautifully today. I will say that. He has, yeah. All right, let's go down to the floor real quick. Carolyn. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know which three players you're going to use in the roll off and, uh, well, and who's going to go yes. first. So we are going to go with BJ Moore, uh, Marshall Kent. And Packy. And then we, yeah, that's it. Will you go first or second? Who? Who? You guys, your team. Oh, I don't know. Do we get choice of that or something? You do. I yeah, you're the, higher, you're the higher seat. You do? Oh, man. I Maybe don't know. I should be asking Dell. Do we want to go first or not? Are we going to bowl first or second? What do you think? I say first. Yeah, yeah. that's what we thought. Thanks, yeah. guys. Good luck. Yeah, we. I got the name. I thought maybe Barnes might get in there, but certainly hard to argue with the three that she picked. And Packy just has to keep this on the lane, essentially. That's on the lane. Yeah. Raise that average. We shot 200 twice. So we will go to that three man shootout. And we already know whom the Kingpins were choose. We guessed LAX's lineup Belmo Barrett. And the third is an interesting one. I would think it's either going to be McCune or Tang, but you never know. 
And Packy Hammerhan will be in the for in the shootout for New Jersey Kingpins, as will BJ Moore. And Marshall Kemp. And I'll let uh, uh, Cortez Shank will go ahead and just shoot at the spare. And that appears to be the case, which you're allowed to substitute. We get to pick our order, right? Please race responsibly. Never mind. Nope. Well, yeah, Chris didn't hear your interview, Randy, so he's not aware that uh, Carolyn has already oh, oh. announced yeah, our, uh, okay. her intentions. Sorry, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate the love. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. I guess you can't <laughs> sub out. He was just going to shoot the, the leave. Oh, he can't sub out for the last shot, apparently. Uh, normally, you can sub before a frame be, uh, begins and that other player is out for the game, but this is the 10th frame, this is the last shot. So. <laughs> There you go. Right. So if he subs, if he if he shoots the spare, then Packy's out of the roll out of the shootout. You yeah, can't yeah. do that. The other thing I wondered if they were just using Shank as kind of a canary in a coal mine too, just to. Well, if it goes if it goes past the three shots, right, right. then it becomes uh, one player one shot at a time, and you need you know another man on deck. Right. That's the other thing. So you would have been short person, short handed. Sure. Do you need to know our lineup or? Why do they go first? Yesterday it was the left lane that went first. Whoever started on the left picks what? Picks which, who's, which team's going first. So whoever randomly, team, whoever is on the left lane. It's the home team. That's how Okay. You know, there is a coin that we've invented a long time we're, ago. We're, we're, we're going as we go along. Okay, yeah. I can, I can see that. We did, right? It was us, right? What's happening here? Am I lost? Do I belong here? Okay, just checking. So we thought it was a higher seat. Apparently, it's the team that starts on the left lane. So that's news. Well, it's going to be BJ Moore on the right lane that will get it going. And even though we are in Detroit and we're not in uh, New Jersey or LAX, New Jersey is the home team for this. So they got the choice, and this is a solid choice to start things off. He started to walk away from that. He knew it was going to strike. Yeah, that was a walk off. Uh, Boy, is he just thrown it. So good. So Dom Barrett, who has also thrown it absolutely beautifully today, gets the first dibs. This is a big shot because if he doesn't strike, LAX is immediately behind and we're not shooting spares. It is literally a three ball roll off. A solid, solid player. Man, is he any good? Low pulse rate. What do I have to do? Okay, throw a strike. I got it. No trouble. We're tied. Just another beauty from the future Hall of Famer, Don Barrett. Let's go, baby, right here. see what happens in our next match with that right lane. Got a little rev rate arriving in our next match. Motown versus the Adam Splitters. All right, well that could end up being huge. That extra tap on two, so that's eight. They're down two. Nine or better, and the Kingpin shut him out and take the match. And that is big news for Dallas because that means L.A. does not clinch a spot today, and the strikers are still alive and kicking. I can promise you Norm Duke's watching. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Check. 
10 is better than 9, which is better than 8, which is the Kingpins have taken this match. But well, Carolyn picked, and Dell picked the right three there. There's no argument with that. That was perfection from the Kingpins. And we still do not know who has that sixth and final playoff spot in the PBA Elite League. Becky Hanrahan needed nine or better. That's better. Next up, one more match. Maybe another shootout. The Well, today the NASCAR Cup Series is on FS1 as the circuit heads to Martinsville for some door-to-door -door action at the paperclip. The pre-race gets things started at 2 Eastern with the green flag flying at 3 on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Well, we had some thrills and spills and some racing and rubbing in that last. It went down to the shootout there, and what a great choice by Carolyn and Del Ballard, the three they picked, absolutely yeah. striped every strike. Yeah, this pair completely flipped from yesterday. The left lane was better yesterday, and today the, it's the right lane. And uh, Carolyn and, and her team got to finish on that lane, and then she obviously picked the right three players to close it out for them. Well, team bowling can be a lot of fun. It can also be a, a quite a bit of stress as well, as we've seen so far this weekend, and we still have one match to go. So that leads us to this edition of Pressing Questions with Kimberly Pressler, brought to you by Go Bowling. What is so great about team bowling? I love team bowling. I love it. Love it. I love team bowling. Jason, what is your favorite thing about team bowling? The feeling when you win with, you know, a team coming up behind you and, and giving you a hug when you make a shot and you get those points. Um, it feels a little, a little better than, you know, turning around on your own and everyone hates you because you won. Kyle, what is your most favorite thing about team bowling? Uh, getting to bowl with the Lumberjacks. I mean, I'm repping the gear. I uh, love just bowling with all the guys, the communication, the fun we have. Uh, it feels like a family on the lane. To get up there and like throw a shot when like your team needs you and you know that it means as much to you as it does to them, like that's the best. You know, winning on a team or winning in a, in a doubles tournament or a trios tournament, it's always better than winning by yourself because you get to share that with a group of other people. There's a lot of pressure that comes with it too, so that part's not for everyone. Is there a least favorite thing about team bowling? Yeah, the prize is divided by five. Oh, I think the negative is when you don't perform well, you, you have to start crafting the apology letters to the boys. What about the least favorite thing? Uh, letting them down, man. If you miss, it's not just uh, it's not just yourself. I'd rather bowl 100 on TV than not strike when I need it. Do you know someone who did that? I, not recently, no. <laughs> well, he's right about not recently. <laughs> um, what, yes, and we need to explain for those of you who may not know that Tom actually did that one time. But to be fair, he would have had to throw a 300 to win that match. Yeah, he shot 100 against Mika's 299 at the 2011 Tournament of Champions. And I don't, I don't think a player has ever handled a game quite as well as Tom Doherty did that afternoon. Well, he has the right personality for it, if that makes any sense at all. If you know Tom, you know what we're talking about. So. Let's take a look at updated standings because what's happened here and one of the things when we talked to Carolyn and Dell earlier is that she wants to get into that buy. Well, guess what? At the moment, they're in the top two gets a first round buy. Las Vegas with the best record so far. New Jersey now with a tiebreaker edge over Portland and head-to-head -head bins against each other. The Adam Splitters are already in. Motown is already in. But the Dallas Strikers are still in. The only team that's been knocked out right now are, oddly enough, the defending champion Waco Wonders. So the next match will be the Akron Adam Splitters taking on the Motown Muscle. There's Tom Doherty. Let's go to Bayside Bowl 2018. The Silver Lake Adam Splitters, as they were known back then. This is a solid team, by the way. They beat the Philadelphia Hitmen 2-0 at Bayside Bowl in Portland. Chris Barnes was the MVP that day. And with that W, the Adam Splitters became a three-time Elias Cup champion, 14, 15, and 18. Huge props to the guy in the crowd with the Hulkamania outfit. They are now the Akron Adam Splitters. They're taking on the Motown Muscle here at Strobel Arena at Thunder Bowl Lanes, PBA Elite League, presented by Snickers. And Kimberly Pressler is standing by with EJ Tackett. 
Thanks, Dave. So, EJ, fans looking in see you and Anthony on the same team, two of the hottest bowlers on tour right now, and they think you guys are going to dominate right from the beginning, but that has not been the case this season. You guys actually struggled in the beginning, but now you guys are on a hot streak, so what's changed? Yeah, we got up to a slow start. It was uh, kind of one of those things where we kind of had to learn how to work together a little bit. Our communication got better and better, and once everything started clicking, it was full steam ahead, and hopefully we can bring home another one today for this uh, hometown Motown team. Well, team bowling is quite different than individual bowling, but let's talk about the lanes for a second because, you know, there's a lot of talk about how brutal they are, and I saw you over in the wings watching uh, the other two games. What did you learn from that that you can apply here today in your match? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty simple. Everybody threw your thing in front of us, so uh, it's going to be, you know, bumping up to it and uh, just making good shots, get your ball through the pins, and uh, not make mistakes, you know. That's, that's the biggest thing in this environment is uh, not making mistakes and, and opening doors for your opponent. So hopefully we can go out there, string some strikes, a uh, few mistakes as possible, and see if we can come away with a win. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Kimberly and EJ. Take a look at the Adam Splitters lineup put together by Mark Baker. Chris Vai, Nick Pate, Francois Lavoie, Tom Doherty, and Jesper Svensson will be the anchor. Special shout out to Chris Vai's mom for cookies that were brought to the booth today. Very much appreciated. Well, that was just as straight as you could throw it. No, and that's what they've been doing. There's one thing I do know. PBA champion and coach Mark Baker knows how to put teams together, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. One of the real brains of the sport, but unquestionable. And for Motown, the muscle, Jason Sterner, Sam Cooley, EJ Tackett, Justin Knowles, who's a local, and of course, Anthony Simons. Five. Go. Messenger? Seriously? Just gonna lean there on the lamppost like that? Take shot right now. Well, I think one of the first reactive balls we've seen, except for Richie Tees, he was using reactive. Sterner's going with reactive here to start. And again, the difference yeah. with between reactive well, resin and urethane, reactive yeah. resin hooks a lot really more. Down. I thought that was urethane yeah, hooks go early point. and goes very straight down lane. We'll urethane also burns up the front part do. of the lane and drags oil towards the pins. All right, Nick Pate out of Invergrove Heights in Minnesota, still looking for that first PBA Tour title. Out of the number two spot here for Mark Baker. And we're definitely seeing a strategy here. Good looking shot, just didn't get a break. If there's one thing Nick Pate is good at, it's rolling it. This kid can really get up the back and roll it end over end. You see Dick Allen in the back is sitting this game out. We'll see if there's any substitutes made at the end of game number right, one. Right. No trouble. You know the word I've heard all, all weekend, more than any other, when we're talking about this, is communication. And we've heard everybody, almost every player that either Kimberly has spoken to or that we've talked to, I keep hearing the word communication about this format. With a strike. And every player seems to think, and we hear a lot of it on our microphones as well. Sharing shots, sharing the intel that you get. Speaking of games that are attractive to watch, here's another one. Perfect. You saw the ball just bury the eight and nine right into the pit. Oh, we're starting to see a little bit different trend here. There's some more reactive resin coming into play. EJ Tackett, pretty much everything he throws will react, even if it isn't reactive. Ooh, big snap.
happy there at the end. Like EJ Tackett in the three hole? Well, I, I'm using, yeah, that's I'm using because that they have Anthony Simonson as well. <laughs> what a luxury. Uh, EJ going with reactive. This one gets left. Elbowed it just a hair. Last player like that is not going to miss that shot very often. How bad? Doherty going with urethane. Now his new nickname, Tampa Tom, because a couple years ago in Tampa, he destroyed him at the World Series That's of right, Bowling. I remember that. If I remember correctly, that was the same World Series that both uh, PDW and Walter Ray Williams Jr. announced they were retiring from the Younger Tour. And Tom beat both of them in match plays. Like, really, Tom? Uh, yeah, he ended up, just by coincidence, having to bowl both those guys, yeah. and he took them both down. By the way, he's at 49 years old. <laughs> Love to see him. 50 tour if he wants it. That's a pretty shot from Justin Knowles. Justin was going to get some playing time today for sure because he knows this building very well. He's a local. And Jason Couch, the manager for Motown, right there in the foreground, said there is no way I am not bowling Justin Knowles today. than I've seen in, in quite some time and obviously it's something he's been working on but you can see now how much shorter the backswing is the finish looks the same what would be the advantage of a shorter backswing? I think just trying to gain more control Wow. you know maybe less moving parts okay I mean I think the thing is is that when and I went through it myself for many years is when when it's not when it's not working you search and you tinker and you tweak and you're always trying something you're always trying to find that magic pill through the first five of this race to two between the atom splitters and the motown muscle it's the atom splitters with the advantage through five but they've struck four times out of five And the PBA is proud to have Bowlers to Veterans Link as the official charity of the PBA Tour. Today's BBL salute to veterans. We welcome U.S. Marine Corps Lance Corporal Frank Robinson, who served from 1981 to 84. Mr. Robinson, thank you for your service. Yes, Donate, sir. go to bbl.org. Thank you for being here, sir. Yesterday, you needed Marines on, to get through the lane patterns. Right, Today, it's going to be a little bit easier. All about how the players set up this pattern. I think it's also another thing. We talked to the managers, and only one group of managers did not watch the telecast yesterday. That was the Ballards, and they were watching their daughter bowl, which is certainly understandable and more important. But they, they learned a lot. Well, you, I think you made mention of who did watch for them. Oh, yes, and Chris Barnes. Yeah, so they did have eyes on the, I mean, on the pair. The, pr the professor was taking notes. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, they watched uh, Alyssa and Vanderbilt, unfortunately, not make the NCAA tournament. Uh, but clearly armed with this intel, all these managers have, and, and, of course, the, bowl the bowlers have made some adjustments to the good. Oh, no, a sweet kick on the nine for Mr. Sterner. A lot of the players for Motown decided to go with reactive resin and move just inside of where the urethane balls were going down the lane on this right lane. Nick Pate. Oh no, bad break 
on the ringing 10. Both these teams, by the way, clinched playoff spots by winning in round 11. And Motown a game back of Akron in the standings. Carbon copy of Nick's first shot. And the only two shots that haven't struck for the Adam splitters are Nick Pate's two ringing 10s. Routine for Nick, quality. Akron beat Motown two to one in the fifth round. We are now in round number 12. And earlier, if you missed it, New Jersey took down LA in a shootout. So they went 2 and 0 against LA in regular season play. Cooley. Sam Cooley buries 10. A colorful strike for Sam. Great shot, buddy. Way to go. Good shot. Good pitch. Time to get ready. And Francois Lavoie. See what he's done in the lead league so far, and that is some heavy duty numbers for Frankie. Frankie, 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 Frankie. Yes, sir. Divide and conquer. Put him up here. Put him up here. Come on, man. Yeah. Nice shot. Goes against uh, all things we normally see, isn't it? Definitely goes against the grain, but he's got such great touch. Season. A lot of that since he came out on tour. I'm still amazed by the physics of, of his game. I, I, I've said it for years the pound for pound, the strongest ball on tour. It, it just is something to behold, and even I've seen it for years, it's still astonishing to me. He's a hell of an athlete for his size, he's got incredible strength. Yeah, and other good. Athlete in other sports, a good one, golf particularly. Tom Doherty able to paralyze some pins and take them down as well. Senior tour coming in hard. She would have just said, senior tour coming in hard. Got a boy, Tom. See you out there. Tom's, Tom, when he goes out on the PBA 50 tour to be like printing money, he'll do okay. Justin Knowles. Got a lot of folks on his side today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, big, big mixer. I'm gonna lick the bowl after that mixer. Beautifully done there. Lick the bowl. You know, somebody makes a nice bowl of brownies or cookies and you want to take that batter before you throw it away. Nobody should ever throw the batter away, the leftover. Nobody. Two strikes and two pins to shut out the muscles, and here's perhaps just the man to do it. We call that the Chuck Woolery. Two and two. Oh, whoa, we. What? Throwback Jesper right there. One more of those, and that would just about do it. That will do it, really. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. He gets this one, the only. He could bowl right-handed. I mean, the only thing that would stop it would be that ice skater that had that club. Right here with us, bro. <laughs> I think security will take care of that before it happens. Tanya something. Go! Go! Oh. Hello! That's an explosive <laughs> pocket there for Jesper. Just a couple more, and we'll be uh, moving on to game number two in this race for two. And the Adam Splitters will have the one nothing advantage over Motown. Is it too early to say, after watching this beauty, the Iceman cometh? Not at all. 
It's fun watching him. All that power. But he gets it going. Man. Oh, ringing seven, but that's irrelevant. He just got uh, much more than he needed. And so the first point goes to the Adam splitters. And by the way, it's not as if the muscle bowled poorly. No. They bowled fine. It's just that they didn't bowl as well. I mentioned at the top of the show, yesterday we had two, two games over 200. Uh, today we've had five. And this is the highest scoring match. Yeah, no doubt about it. 258's our best game from any team we've seen. And again, it's all about where the players started in practice before game one, before we came on the air, yeah. where they camped out. And they all played the same part of the lane, and now the lane's transitioned and broke down and are very playable. Yesterday, players were all over the place, some throwing urethane, some throwing reactive. One guy's swinging it from fifth there to seven. Another player's throwing it straight up five. By the way, these pins matter, if you're wondering, because total pins is absolutely part of tiebreakers and everything else. So Anthony Simonson picking up 27 there for the muscle, that's important for them. Yep. Obviously, it's not going to change the result of the game, but still, when you look at total pins, which is absolutely a category that matters here, those shots do matter. But right now, the Adam splitters are what matter. They take point number one on the race for two against the Motown muscle on FS1. And we have another match coming up. Can the Motown Muscle tie things up with the Akron Adams Splitters? Well, today on Fox, it's week two of the United Football League as the Houston Roughnecks take on the D.C. Defenders. Spring just got stronger. The hard-hitting action continues today at 4 Eastern on Fox. Hey, partner, let's go down to the floor and talk to Hall of Famer manager Jason Couch. Jason, after a tough game one loss, what do you tell your team moving over the left lane? Continue to throw it well, Randy. Honestly, if you would have told me after three sh three different matches I've seen on TV this week that we we're going to bowl 247 and lose, I'd tell you you're nuts. So the boys are just going to stay the course. We're going to have one better shot this game. We're going to go to a roll-off. All right, Jason. Good luck. Thanks. Well, Thank you. You nailed that. I, I couldn't agree with him more. The 247 yesterday would have won by miles. Yeah. Nobody saw that coming. No lineup changes for either manager, and again, why would you? No, uh, no need. Yeah, nobody stunk the joint out. Everybody was hitting high flush and almost getting strikes, and even the ringing tens. We, yeah, it was strong performance on both sides. Not almost getting strikes, getting strikes. Now Sterner goes back to his teammates and says, all right, this is what I did. This is my move from the right lane to the left lane. I moved three or four with my feet, two with my target. And you saw where the ball ended up, right? And the leadoff position is almost like a scout in Absolutely. some ways. So we'll see what Chris Vai's message is to his Adam splitters. They're eight and four if they win this. Motown six and five currently. But again, both sides are already in the playoffs. And the strike fest continues. And Vai's going to go back and do the same with his teammates. Here we go. Here we go. Hi, Nick. Right up the left. And I actually, I actually kind of got it a little bit more. Yeah. And that held beautifully for Cooley. Good shot, bud. And he's perfect three for three. I thought for half a second this might go through the face, no, but uh, no, sir. That, that urethane stuff that's gone down the lane for uh, about three games now, it's no. created some hold it on has. both lanes. No question about it. This is the guy who I think got cheated last game. Yeah. And they still won. There we go. Didn't get cheated that time. Great job. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Come on, Frankie. Good work. Here we go. Here we go. The rat shredder right here. 
that. It's a pretty good messenger with the Earth Aid. And, oh, I didn't think that happened to him. That messenger cheated him. EJ's been bowling on this PBA Elite League now for 10 years. Started out with LAX. And the easiest decision for any manager is, who am I going to retain <laughs> for next year? Jason Couch will not have yeah. one blink of an eye loss of sleep over who he retains. All right, next question. <laughs> Take me out, boys. Come on. Francois Lavoie, five titles. It is quality over quantity in his case. You hear that? You know, for that red ring, that was one explosive. Way, that's not gonna be right. <laughs> Lay there. Lay there. It did. That laid there like a hibernating bear. And hit about as hard when it's, once it woke up. Yeah. Good job, Dawson. Let's go, bud. Justin doing well. He is home center for him is Jack 60 in Jackson, Michigan. That's a well-known house, particularly on the PBA 50 tour. Got a lot of events there. We'll have some more. Okay. Just to add to that, the uh, PBA 50 World Series of Bowling will be at Jack 60 this year. Run it down. All right, run it down, buddy. Come on. Knowles 10th at the Players Championship this year in Wichita. We are very fortunate the 10 kick late because they're already trailing and for a must win for the uh, for the muscle, they can't afford to fall even farther behind. Tom Doherty stepping up, the Adam Splitters working on three in a row. Streak comes to an end with a 610 for Tom. All good to On the it is so dramatic what we saw between the two days. Yesterday we were seeing washouts, we were seeing these bizarre leaves. We saw a 6810 yesterday that got stuck in Sean Rash's lap. And today, Routine spares, an occasional, yeah, you know, problem. But I mean, this has been just smooth sailing for both sides. Yeah, Motown muscle been hanging on to this guy, and understandably. We show it to you, it is just as sweet. Lots of frames left, boys. I think it's top three players in the world. Oh, yeah, Simo. Oh, yeah, I think so. One good one, bro. You can have a good time debating the others. I would probably oh, want yeah, to nominate EJ. Yeah, in the third spot could be like the swinging door spot. Probably Kyle right now. Yeah, you go Kyle, you can go Bill O'Neill. Yep. See, right off the bat, we start. So the same for Jesper Svensson on the right lane as it was for Justin Knowles on the left lane. Justin goes high. So does Jesper Svensson. Jesper in the anchor position. Had a very solid first game on the left lane. For Spencer. Right, and that looked easy. Yeah, they did, and it's not, but the pros make it look easy, that's for sure. We are halfway through this one, and it's very simple for the Adam Splitters. Can they lock this game down? And if they do, it's over. They pick up the W. Muscle can't quite see it that way, and they don't. They're trailing.
PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling. For friends and family fun, log on to GoBowling.com to find a center near you. And a great Strobel Arena inside Thunder Bowl, Allen Park, Michigan. And you've got a conversation with Mark Baker. Yeah, let's get out of the floor talk with Coach Mark Baker. Mark, uh, past PBA champion, so you've been around this game, arguably the best coach on the planet. What is the conversation like with you and your squad during the commercial break? Uh, we're just kind of staying loose. These guys are having a great time, having this year to get together. They've, had, they've turned into a real team. Watching them gel and work together has been a blast. So we're just uh, staying in the moment, having a great time. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Randolph. Mark and I grew up bowling juniors together. You are by California the way. boys. By the way. Yeah. Yep. Grew up in Southern California together and competed against each other for many years. In many places all over that state. There's not a lot of people that call me Randolph. <laughs> nah, yes, Bakes right. does. <laughs> so Jason Sterner left the Wonders last year, picked up by the muscle. The Wonders knocked out of the playoffs yesterday. Oh, that's got to go. Yep. It did. Oh, it does. It, it more did. than hooks. Yep. That hooked so much, it becomes our satisfying moment of the match, sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers or a ball that hooks when you ask it to. <laughs> Good one. A little light tickler there. Four pin goes late. Oh, thank you. Yep. He's got some and dance moves going. Got the out splitters trailing. Oh, oh man. man. It's like watching right, the table like Come on collapse. Now. Just two sides, you put a table together and you take it apart. Man, that was big. Watch this trip, 4-9. Help. Oh, yep. Just stole one. Back and forth goes the lead. Cooley has not missed yet. And every shot off his right hand today has been money. That's cute. Very nice. Sam just going about his business. First game, two bring and tens for Nick Pate, but his last shot was a nice rip rack messenger. To cut it to one. Big shot right here. Boy, yeah. for a blink of an eye, a 5'7 yeah. was sitting on the deck. All right, here we go, here we go. On the spare, on the spare. A lot of frames left. A lot of frames left. Let's go. He says that all the time. That's how I know he likes to hear it. That was almost the Dick Weber special. The trip 5'7. That's right. And if the muscle closes this out, and here comes a closer right here, then we will go to again the three frame shootout. That was real loud. Do not adjust the volume on your TV sets, it's just EJ Tackett. Great time to that for that to happen oh, to Motown. And now it's almost must strike territory for Akron. Started that one out a little more right than normal, but it came right back in perfectly for LeBlanc. Yeah, right, give me a shot here. Give me a shot right here. Right over second arrow. And a nice little rack splitter. Big Boy. shot here for Justin. Well, the last 
last time he went high on that lane and obviously made an adjustment. Look how the max scores changed. Well, here, let me circle that real quick so folks at home can see it. You have the pen. It, and I've heard somewhere before that it's, it's the power of the pen. It is the power of the pen, especially with the Telestrator. But all of a sudden, there's a chance for the Adam Splitters to steal this one. Yeah, there's a shutout in play now, but it starts right here with <laughs> this man, Tom Doherty. 49-year-old Tom Doherty. He's got a sight set on the PBA 50 tour. <laughs> well, it's getting tougher every year. Hello, boys. Yeah, it's I know. It's me, Tom. Never mind the max score. We've got an issue here in the ninth for Doherty. Yeah, on me. Well, you heard manager Mark Baker say, be right. And it was. It was right through the nose, just slightly high of the center of the pocket, leaving the 4 9. Got it. Nailed it. He turned around before the ball was three quarters of the way. Watch this. Watch, watch him turn around. Hey guys, remember me? Yeah, yeah. What? I don't know. Maybe wow. somebody in the audience said something. Either he was going to miss it or whatever, or maybe he said he would make it. But whatever it was, Tom heard it. However, there is a shutout possibility. And not so fast, my friend. The man says. As that number keeps changing. He needs to make this. Yep. And then three. That's it. And we'll go to the shootout. He made it. And he'll get three. Hi, boys. Right away. Right away, guys. All right, so now we start thinking shootout. Who do you want to predict is going to make it for Motown? Oh, wait, I'm only going to give you one choice because the other two are pretty well, obvious. Well, yeah, I mean, it's going to be EJ, it's going to be Simo, and I think it's going to be Cooley. Yeah, I think that's that's the – he's had the best look of arguably anybody on that team today. So we are going to go to the shootout. It is official. So now, what about the Adam Splitters? What are Mark Baker's choices? Yeah, it's mm. going to be either Cooley or Chase. Well, let's see. Let's see what the, this 10th frame does for Jesper Svensson, and then I'll, I'll give you my prediction for them. Okay. I have, to have one guy I think automatically gets in, and that's Frankie. And that's what I wanted to see. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I like Frankie. I like Tom Doherty. What about Nick Pate? And I like Chris Vive. Okay, Vive over Pate, you think? Sam. And don't forget, by the way, just because we mentioned those three names doesn't mean the others aren't going to bowl. That could be a possibility uh, that we get to a fourth and fifth bowler. Hey, Jason, can you hear Randy up in the booth? Yes, sir. All right, extended play now. Who are the three players that are going to go into the shootout for your team? I'm going to have Sterner leading off. I'm going to have EJ Tackett second, and I'm going to have Simon third. So wait a minute. You're going to go with EJ Tackett and, and Simonson? Wow, that's a real reach. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Randy. You're the best. <laughs> best of luck, parts. Thanks. Way to roll the dice, Jason. <laughs> Way to go out on a limb. Oh, bad break there for Spenson. As uh, remember, we talked about total pins uh, managing. Let's see what Bakes has for you. Hey, hey Coach Bakes, what do you got yep, going there in the shootout? Which three players are you going to go with? Who are we going with? Frankie's first and yes, first. I mean, uh, Vi's second. We don't know yet. Uh, we're going with Frankie first, Vi second, and uh, we're going to flip a coin for who goes third. You got it. Thanks. Best of luck. Hey, we got two out of three. Yeah. With that squad. We got two out of three with Motown. We did, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we pulled that one off. Now, again, really quickly, this is no spares, three shots. If we're tied, then we just keep going with one ball roll off. So that's when you could possibly see, I mean, not could possibly, you would see those who are not picked for the first three. 
that has not happened yet this weekend. It's all been settled in three frames. Yeah, he's just throwing it too darn good to leave yeah. it out. Just too darn good. Yeah, first one. Come on, boys. Great shot and great start for Akron. Thanks to Francois Lavoie. See what Jay Stern has to say about it. He's had a good look all day as well, by the way. Yep. Here's who they rolled the dice with. One time, son. Here we go. Nick Pate. He's had some bad breaks on good looking shots. Hasn't missed the pocket. Nope. One once. strike. Remember the last shot? That mm -hmm. swishing 5 7, the five pin goes late. <laughs> Same hit. Right. Yes, Same it hit. was. Same All hit. Right. All right, that's nine. Remember, he's not shooting at that seven pin, so he also can take the lead here with EJ Tackett. And look who's coming up to bat for Motown. How EJ Tackett and then Simonson. Yeah, how unfair is that? Ooh. But you know what? These guys are six and five. But they are on a, a good string lately. Uh-oh, he likes it. He shouldn't. Look. No. Look at his reaction. Yeah. He liked that. He's puzzled. Adam Splitters can lock it out with a strike right here. Be ready. Yeah. Come on, Chris. Lock it in here. Chris Vi for the win. must strike or it's over but if they do strike we'll go again oh who would you like to pick of all the people on the entire planet earth to throw this shot right now he'd be one of them Take it by one. And Akron improves to eight and four. Motown drops to six and six. Again, both teams, however, are in the playoffs. So you had a big win for New Jersey today to move into second place. And another big winner today who didn't even bowl, the Dallas Strikers, who are still alive after LA Lex, LAX could not knock them out. So this is what happened today. This is what the playoffs look like for the moment. Four versus five, Akron and LA, 3-6. Vegas versus the winner, New Jersey, Motown, Portland. Winner of Akron, LA, and of course the Elias Cup final Tuesday, September 17th on FS1 at seven o'clock from the incredible Bayside Bowl in Portland. Kimberly is standing by with the winning team. Mike, I saw you guys all huddling over there in the corner when Anthony got up. And tell me exactly what you guys were saying over there. Were you just holding your breath? No, we were already picking who we were going to pick fourth and fifth. We, were, we knew we, Anthony was going to strike, we thought. So we had the lineup set. We were ready to go. Well, congratulations. You guys move on. All right. Thank you all very much. Congratulations to Mark and the team. The World Series of Bowling, number 15, Thunder Bowl Lanes, Allen Park, Michigan. The Raw Coleman PBA Doubles Championship starts it off in a week, noon Eastern on FS1. Then the Cheetah Championship on the 15th, the Scorpion Championship on the 16th, and primetime, 7 o'clock, the Shark Championship primetime on the 17th. All of that 7 o'clock on FS1. And you take a look at the Rob Holman PBA Doubles Championship, the first event. This field is insane, yeah. Randy. Yeah, pretty strong. I think the strongest uh, in, in a Rob Holman Doubles ever, and maybe the strongest doubles in the history of the PBA Tour. 103 titles, 32 majors, and nine of them have won that title.
So our coverage of the World Series of Bowling is going to continue next Sunday at noon Eastern on FS1 with that Bob Holman PBA Doubles Championship here from Thunder Bowl Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan. Coming up next, NASCAR Race Day, Martinsville. For Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, and our entire crew, I'm Dave Lamont. You have been watching the PBA on FS1.